Good afternoon. My name is Mary Lou Summers, and um, I used to be, um, grew up as a Sutphin, and I grew up in um, what we call Roanoke Valley uh, on a dairy farm owned by my grandparents. And I now live in Luster's Gate. Um, I came back home uh, several years ago and built a house in Luster's Gate. Yes, uh, my name is John Miller, and I grew up in Luster's Gate. My father owned Luster's Gate store. And uh, Luster's Gate is really still almost the same. It's a crossroads between uh, the road going to Ellet and the road going to Cambria. Uh, Catawba, sorry. <laughs> Catawba. And there is a cheese factory there. And there's a two-room country school that both of us went to. And we're going to talk about that. Right. Um, mostly our chat today is about growing up in the country. Because most of our chats that we've had have been about people who grew up here in the town. So we're gonna tell you what it was like to go to a two-room schoolhouse. We went to the Luster's Gate School, and we had two rooms. I, in the one room was grades one, two, and three, and our teacher was Mrs. Annalee Moore. And in the other room was grades four, five, and six, and uh, our beginning teacher was Mrs. Evelyn Nyhart. And then when we um, went into fifth grade, Mrs. Nyhart left and Mrs. Uh, Bressenham came to be our teacher. Uh, we were there for six years and at the end of the six years, we would um, ride the bus and come to town to finish the rest of our education here in Blacksburg. Okay, and I, was, didn't, I wasn't at, uh, at the Luster Gate School the whole time. I came in the fourth grade. My folks m uh, moved from Pennsylvania. That's when my father bought the store at Luster's Gate. And from then on, I went to Luster's Gate to school for the three years. That's where Mary Louise and I got to know each other very well. And also, uh, there were a lot of different things that took place at, at the school, like uh, uh, we played different kinds of sports. We had. Uh, I can name some of the boys' sports. We would play baseball with a tennis ball and an old slab of wood, and uh, or we or there were big marble uh, players who could just wipe out anybody playing marbles. It was impossible. I lost all my marbles <laughs> probably up here too. So anyway, that was the kind of thing. And of course, the boys always got into fights. I don't know how many times I was either I won or somebody else won, but we had little fights that went on all that time. But you and well, I the girls. Yeah, the girls. The girls mostly uh, played um, house. We uh, had two favorite places that we um, played house. Uh, on the edge of our playground, there was a, a little creek, and we would go down to the creek and build playhouses along the side of the creek. But that didn't last very long because one of our girls uh, got covered in poison ivy, and she was very allergic to it and very sick for a long time. So. Uh, we couldn't go back to the creek anymore, but another place that we built our playhouses were under the, under the school itself because there was a lot of area under there, and the only thing we had to be careful about was the rusty nails and all up in the top of the rafters, but that's where we played house. And um, some of the things that I remember about the school is the fact that uh, when I started first grade there, we didn't have any running water, and the water, uh, they carried it down from the cheese plant in a big bucket, and actually all of the children drank out of the same dipper and, uh, and the bucket, and that's how we got our water. And uh, then I think when you came, we had, uh, we had running water. Had running yes. water that came. So actually, there was a line brought down from the cheese factory, and we had water two sinks to provide water. And that was it, though. But do you think you drank out of the same cup? <laughs> Probably not. But anyway, besides that, we also had two uh, outhouses. Oh, that's right. The boys and girls outhouse, one on way, one far, far part of the, of the plot and the other is in the other part. Do you remember what happened to the girls? It fell in. Yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very cold in the winter time if you went up there. So. Uh, anyway, and, and later on, when my mother taught at the school for 10 years later on, after I, both of us left, and, uh, but the, in the early days, the boys would come down and start the fires in the pot belt stoves, because there's no heat other than those. Later on, my dad used to do that, so it was sort of, a, that was how we got by, because it was not so, always so warm. But uh, we had these two, two stoves. In the, in I wonder why I don't remember being cold ever. 
I just no, don't remember that. You probably wore a lot of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> we probably did too. Well, one of the things that um, I think is very interesting is what we brought for lunch. And all the children had to bring either a, a bag lunch, or I remember I had a little, one of those little square tin lunch boxes, and it had a little thermos in it. And uh, a lot of our kids didn't have anything to eat for lunch but a, a cold biscuit and maybe the water. Um, of course, I always, always had a nice um, meal that my grandmother packed for me, but um, a lot of the children didn't have um, anything to eat except a cold biscuit. Yeah. And, um, or a bean sandwich. That's right, that's <laughs> right, a bean sandwich, that's exactly right. Uh, one of the things I remember um, that happened to us in first grade, uh, we had partners, and um, my best friend and I sat together on um, the front row. And Mrs. Moore, Emily Moore, was our first, second, and third grade teacher. And every morning, right before school started, she would say to all the boys uh, in the room, she would say, okay, do you want me to whip a nail, or do you want to wait till you deserve it? And, you know, several of the boys would stand up and say, we'll take it now, we'll take it now. So Judy and I had to get out of our seat, and she would bend the boy over the front of our seat, and she'd take that paddle, and she'd give them two or three really hard whacks, and then they'd go back to their seat. And if they did something wrong that day, they already had their paddling, so they didn't have to worry about it. But um, I used to think that was awful when she'd send us out of our seats. And, boy, she hit the boys hard. She wouldn't... Uh, put anything about it. She just gave them their whipping right then and there. Also, uh, one thing we should mention that the building still exists. Oh, yes. The, uh, the two-room country school, the Olivers have completely rehabbed the building. They live there as a home, but it's still down in Luster's Gate. It's and it is how old did we say? Oh, uh, it's over 100 years old. Over 100 years. I think we had a celebration. We, we did have yeah. a special celebration. Of the, uh, yeah, it's 100 years old. Uh, also, uh, one other thing, I guess, uh, was that the, um, there were all the kids that didn't didn't really like school very much, mm -hmm. maybe some of these boys. I remember them all sitting in the back of the room waiting till they were 16 so they could quit school. They right. didn't yeah. study, they didn't read, they didn't make any problems in school at all. But they just sat in the back and they were just waiting till they became 16 and then whoosh, they were gone. That's right, you could, be, uh, you could be in the third grade and be eight years old and in the back of the room, there might be a 14 or a 15 year old just yeah, waiting to right, get out. Right, right. Well, a couple of other things I remember about it that I think would not have ever happened in a, in a town school is um, a lot of our children, like I said, for lunch didn't have very much. And in the winter when it was cold, um, the teachers would bring um, food and make, um, had this great big pot that they put on the stove, the pot bellied stove and they would make um, vegetable stew. Hmm. And they would feed all the children uh, the stew at lunchtime so everybody would have a hot lunch. Yeah. And uh, I thought that was real interesting. And also, uh, uh, you know, we have a few stories about the school, of course, I mean, the guys at school. Well, right. One of them is, uh, you have to tell the Hail Mary one, but I, the one about uh, the, the Smith boys came to school and they had been hunting that night and must have run into a polecat because they smell horrible. They came into the into the school and the teacher immediately said, you go outside, you start a fire out there, you burn as much, make as much smoke as you can, and you stay in the smoke. So they get supposedly get rid of the polecat smell. I'm not sure that ever worked very well. I was trying to say, did they come back and you could smell I don't remember they come They probably smoke a, a combination of wood smoke and polecat sauce. Well, um, some of the things you were referring to with the prayer was um, that wouldn't happen now in any school anywhere was um, we had the start of the Korean War. And uh, this was when Mrs. Bressingham was, um, Miss. The, Miss Bressingham, <laughs> right, Miss. She was the new teacher for us. And uh, she happened to have been raised uh, in the Catholic Church. And she was very worried about what was going to happen to America with this new war that we were in. So she asked us to take a letter home to all of our parents to sign, could we say this Hail Mary prayer each morning <laughs> to save the nation? And of course, all, none of our parents minded, and they yeah. all signed it. And so every morning, we, would, we had learned this prayer, and we would say this prayer 
uh, because we were trying to save America. And then the other sweet story I remember about Miss Bressingham was, um, as I said, I grew up on a farm, so I had a pet dog, and um, he would go with us to the bus stop every day. And one morning, he ran out in the road, and a car hit him and killed him. And right before the bus came, so I, I was just crying and crying, I couldn't stop. And I got on the bus, and I cried all the way to school, and I went in and sat down at my desk, and I covered my head, and um, Mrs. Bressingham never asked me all day long what was wrong with me. She never called on me. She never told me I had to get up and leave. And after that, after I got over the dog and all the crying, I thought, Miss Bressingham is the best teacher that ever, mm -hmm. ever lived because she understood about how yeah. I felt about my dog. So um, that's one of the nice memories that I have. And several, oh, many, many years later, I'd say 50 years later, I happened to see her, and um, I was able to tell her how I felt about her and my dog. <laughs> yeah, she's still here. She's yeah. still in Blacksburg. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. I think she's in Blacksburg, but in, in other words, she was here for a visit or something, and yeah. I happened to tell her uh, how I appreciated the fact that she understood about my dog. Well, you know, all the time that I was in school there, I didn't particularly, I was not too happy with mathematics. Oh, were you not? No. Oh. Even though later on I graduated physics and so forth, I was supposed to know mathematics, but somehow I just didn't want to do anything with anything. So, so uh, my parents were really unhappy with me not doing very well with Ms. Bresnahan and my mathematics. But towards the end, I sort of perked up and did okay. <laughs> but the thing I do remember about our time there was also when MacArthur was fired by Truman, uh -huh. we listened. No school. We, li we listened to his speech. MacArthur's speech to Congress saying how sorry it was that I got fired or whatever. And you know, it's the uh, old soldiers never die, they just fade away. Uh -huh. That's, of all the things I remember about Buster Gate School, that's you one. That? <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, um, I remember too that, um, you know, we were, I, I'm not I'm good at distances, but what, we were a fourth of a mile or an eighth of a mile from the store. Just oh, yeah, around, very short. Just, yeah, yeah, very, very short, short distance, right around the curve. I mean, I walked curve. back and forth. Yeah, right around the curve. So um, the, the school bus had to come from up here in town where it picked up the high school kids and come down to Luster's Gate to pick us up to take us home. And so we had about 30 or 40 minutes before, when our school got out before the bus got yeah. there. So every evening we could, uh, after school let out, we could all run up to the store and take our pennies and. Uh, your dad uh, carried all kinds of penny, penny candy, candy yeah. and we could buy penny candy. And we'd go every after, save our pennies, and every afternoon we'd go after school yeah. and get us some penny candy. <laughs> well, the store, you know, really was, um, I guess, the center of our whole activities. Um, yeah, the we, big social, yeah, the big part yeah, of the social activity. Place where everybody went. And, um, uh, and it was a very typical country store, more than it you would find out today, because they sold horseshoes, they sold car, you know, all kinds of nails and clothing, and anything you could think of, you could keep it I, I just recently saw a picture of um, your dad holding up a pair of jeans yeah, for, right. for um, one of the people in yeah, the community to Shoes, see. everything, yeah, so, yeah. and uh, feed for horse, a feed mm -hmm. for cattle and things right, like that. Right. So, and also I might mention, the store building is still there too. Right. The Western yes. Gate store, though it's not a store anymore. And so is the cheese plant. And the cheese factory. They're both uh, So those three units. things are still, strangely enough, exist where a lot of the places in the world are. That's right. They just right. completely yeah. wiped out. Well, um, I know uh, one of the things in the summertime when school was out, uh, one of the things that, uh, I lived on a farm and my grandfather had uh, five grandchildren that lived on the farm there with uh, in the houses that were on the farm. And so every so often he would have to go to the cheese factory and take all of his milk cans yeah. and fill them with whey to bring down oh, to feed yeah, to yeah. his hogs. And so we'd get to ride on the trailer <laughs> and go up to the store and then and during the summertime we'd usually get, we had more money because we only went once a week and we would get um, uh, soft drinks and oh, yeah. candy and ride the trailer up and ride the trailer back and that was a real treat for us yeah. in the summertime. Well, you know, we, we should maybe talk about our farm experience, too. Okay, okay. So, uh, I mean, the reason I you know, thought about that is the, the way business, 
because uh -huh. I, I had raised pigs myself, and uh, I was a big 4 H'er, and I got a purebred Hampshire pig as a member of the 4 H, and I raised her, and she had many li li litter leaders. Litters. Litters, <laughs> not leaders. <laughs> <laughs> she had many leaders, too. Yeah, of uh, pigs, she'd have 15 or something. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, how long did you keep her? Oh, she had several litters. Oh, okay. I don't remember now how long she was. But that was the thing about I had had a big milk can, and I had a wheelbarrow, and I walked over to the cheese factory and filled it up with whey. Uh -huh. I brought it back, and then mixed it with some of the feed or something, mm -hmm. and gave it to the pigs. Uh, and they right. loved it. They and just, it was really good for them. It, it had and, minerals in it. Yeah, food. right. And whey is a byproduct of making cheese. Yeah, that's right. right. And um, the reason we had the cheese factory there is because uh, like my grandfather, who owned a dairy farm, all down the valley, uh, the farmers, uh, most of them were dairy farmers. Yeah. And, um, but not any longer. Really right. And uh, the milk was what they called grade three milk, I think it C. was. C, grade yeah. C milk. And so um, it didn't go to a dairy for people to drink. And the, the cheese plant came about because those farmers needed a place yeah. to sell their milk. That's right. And so um, they started the cheese plant. And, um, and it was a co op at the beginning. Right, a co op. And, and um, your uncle Ike was very important. Well, he was the president of yeah. it. And uh, that's how we originally got all our water down there, is the yeah. chief's plant um, piped the water in from right. a, a spring, spring up, in the, uh -huh, up yeah. in the mountains. And so that's how the whole community finally got running water, yeah. was by the chief's plant. And um, <clears throat> uh, of course, um, I think how long did the chief's plant run? For about maybe, 40 years more, 40 something years like maybe. that? Well, you know, uh, the co-op sort of stopped, mm -hmm. and then Mr. Moore bought the cheese factory. He oh, was okay. a cheesemaker from New York. Okay. I don't even remember no, this. No, I don't remember that. Okay. He bought the cheese, and it was going very well. He was still making that daisy formula for cheese mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. And then uh, there was no problem. But what happened is Mr. Moore was walking on the road down there. Someone ran into him and killed him. Oh my goodness. And I after that, that, that was the end of the cheese. Oh, okay. There was no I more cheese. There were no cheese makers, so oh. that ended the, the oh, cheese factory. Oh, I know that. Yeah. Okay. Well, what did you do in the summer when you weren't in school? I worked on the farm. Oh, <laughs> now I was. Uh, I worked on Van Von Court's farm mm -hmm. and also Agnew's farm, which were very close to mine. And we would put up hay, you know, day after day of cutting hay, putting hay in the barn. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they would bale it, sometimes we'd put it on, you know, a big wagon, put it mm -hmm. on and then hook it up and take it into the barn. Or in different seasons we'd shock hay, uh, shock wheat. Mm -hmm. And then eventually when the harvest came, when the big buy, uh, harvester came around for the wheat, we'd mm -hmm. go there and throw the sheaves into the wheat, into the thing. It's very dirty work. And then raised your pigs, of course. And of course, our, Did yeah. You sell those. That Most of the time, I sell them, but I also we also butchered our own pigs, okay. as you know. Yes, and, we did. And, yeah. yeah, and uh, we'd have five or six hams hanging in the basement. They were uh, salt cured, not smoke cured. Right. I think that was a common thing. And uh, and also we raised. Uh, I raised steers, two maybe two oh, steers. Okay. So we I, we also had beef that we butchered. Well, I, so, I tell the tale about uh, my grandfather, of course, butchered uh, a lot of, of hogs during the, uh, in uh, the winter, usually Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, he had five children, so he raised uh, a hog for each child, and then I think about three for us there on the farm. And um, so um, one time he decided, okay, he was gonna raise a beef like some other people did. And he made a big mistake because he let us cut the <laughs> beef, and it became a, a, a pet. pet. Yeah, yeah, that's and not then a good idea. He, right, and then when he butchered it, we all cried, and all the girl, well, were five granddaughters and one grandson. We all cried and cried, and we would not touch the beef, and he had to give every bit of it away. And he said, "Well, I'll just never do that again." He well, said that was a big mistake. It was sort of like my first pig, Gloriana. That was uh -huh. her official name, and yes. I had a, a plaque that said she was a purebred Antwerp. And she had these many leaders, 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 <laughs> leaders, <laughs> leaders again, uh, of pigs, and we sold them and everything. And, uh, but uh, of course, she couldn't do that forever, and she was like a pet for me. 
she'd walk around and uh, uh, open the gate into our yard, come in and mm -hmm. everything. And I took her to the Montgomery County Fair I won second prize oh, wonderful. with her uh, and also. So it was very tough. I couldn't butcher her. Yeah. So my folks said, well, we'll sell her. Oh, did they really? Yeah. Oh. What, what could you do? There's yeah. either you butcher it and then you'd say, oh, my oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. So it, that's what happened they to Gloria. Oh. Somebody else got the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we never did have any real pets other than that, that baby cow. Um, or what do you call it? Baby? Well, steer probably. Um, but probably we, steer, yeah. we had dogs and kittens, you know, but we had lots of, of farm dog that went and got the cows every afternoon. And then we had a, just a house dog and we had several cats. Uh, but one one time my grandfather, somebody talked him into uh, having a, a goat, and it was a <laughs> pet goat. But the bad part about it was um, my grandfather had built a squirrels a playhouse, a really nice little house that looked like a real house, and it had a living room and a, di a living room and a kitchen and a bedroom. And we played in there all the time with our baby dolls. And um, so this goat was just like a dog and just like a pet. He followed us everywhere we went. But the bad part about it was that when he would go into the playhouse and lay down and watch us play with our dolls, we didn't take our dolls with us uh -oh, when we left. Uh -oh. He would eat the yes. blankets and the dresses <laughs> and the dolls. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> you're talking about little girls screaming and hollering and beating on that goat after he, we found out he'd eat our babies. We, but that was the only pet we ever had was just that goat. Plus so, the dog. so we should talk about our church, right? Right, let's talk about our church, which is still there too. The church is still there. I still go to that and, church. And Mary right? Louise goes to that church. So that's the Roanoke Valley Presbyterian Church. Right. And it was founded more than 100, 100 maybe 200 years. The first preaching was in 17 something. Right? right, and I think we had a birthday, uh, didn't we have 150th birthday? 150th birthday, right. So uh, maybe 15 years ago yeah, or so. Right, yeah, right. So it's been around a long time. But uh, uh, my favorite <laughs> story <laughs> is that uh, I had a harem, if you understand what I mean. Right. My Sunday school class consisted of five girls. Five girls. And me. And you. <laughs> And you so didn't I, you didn't count you didn't call it a harem till you got much no, older. Till I got much older, I didn't think <laughs> about it. those that things. I didn't know what it meant. And and Miss Kessler who was our Sunday school right. teacher. She was very protective of uh, continuing to teach us. <laughs> so we were. Well, I guess till we left for college. Till we left for college, yeah. sure. Yeah, she and she came down from Blacksburg. Yeah, and, right. and was ours. And she also uh, formed a little youth group and. Um, I guess we were maybe in high school by the time we had the youth group, and then mm -hmm. some of the other kids that grew up there around the store they joined our youth yeah, group, yeah. and we uh, we did uh, we went skating and we um, had little parties and things like that. Yeah, we had a hay ride and all. So I um, do remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but and w we also had like um, I know you showed me a picture recently of. My sister and your sister oh, yeah. and yeah. everybody as angels. As angels. And angels in the Christmas program. Well, and we had vacation Bible school for right. all the children up and down the valley and that was very successful. And many, many children were right. kind of that. And right now our little church doesn't have it has one little boy and that's all. Mm -hmm. Well everybody's either died or or, you know, grown moved up and away. moved away from it. And yeah. we're a very, very small organization. Yeah. Just yeah. a very little congregation. Yeah, my mother loved to, she would put together these uh, Christmas pageants because everybody got dressed up like angels or, mm -hmm. or like the shepherds right, or the kings, right. the three kings came and so forth. <laughs> That's true. I remember one one of them, uh, uh, my cousins lived up, up the road and of course we all walked to church every Sunday. We were close mm -hmm. enough to walk and um, we had started the Christmas program and their little dog came in and sat down and watched the whole Christmas yeah. program while we were having the program. <laughs> he, everybody left him at home, so he just decided to come to church on. too. <clears throat> well, what did you do for fun when you were in the summertime or in the evenings? Uh, after I don't school? know if there's any fun time. <laughs> I was I was working, and then of course, uh, you know, I had a big garden beside all the cattle, mm -hmm. besides the steers and the pigs and so forth. I had a big garden. About my only real, I used to walk to Blacksburg to go to the movie on Saturday afternoon. Oh, right, yeah. That was the big deal, to walk up to Blacksburg. And it then was walk for back, us, too. Yeah. To walk back. Three well, we miles, didn't have to up walk. Up the mountain <laughs> and then down the mountain. 
we didn't have to walk, but every every Saturday, that was one thing that the country kids did, is uh, we went to town and we got to, at that time, the little lyric, the, the little thing. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah right, that used to be over there. Uh -huh, across the street from a well on the corner. I have no idea what's there now, but yeah. there used to be the um, hotel was on the corner. Yeah, yeah. And the theater was maybe one or two stops up from that. And we'd see uh, Roy Rogers. Oh, yeah, all the Ellen. westerns were played on right, that. Right, right. <laughs> and it cost us, uh, I think you said a quarter, and then it went to 50 cents. Yeah. yeah so. And then we'd get to go across the street, and um, uh, always we always went to Tech Drug because one of our friends, uh, my family's friends, was the... Um, um, pharmacist there, so I would always go to Tech Drug, and we would get to have what we call a Coke float on uh, um, Saturday after the movies, and then uh, we go to the Five and Dime, <laughs> and um, buy yeah, yeah, roses, Five and Dime, and all. <clears throat> well, some of the things that we did on the farm is every day in the summer, if it was not raining, we would go to the creek. Yeah, well, I used to go down there too. Yeah, I go swimming with you. Right, come yeah. to the creek, and uh, we'd usually spend. Um, at least an hour, an hour and a half at the creek every afternoon after lunch. And you dammed it, you dammed it up. Yeah, we dammed it up, so there's a big, what we call a swimming hole. Right, right. And I wouldn't go in there now for anything in this world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, you know, it's icky bottoms and everything. And then um, if it was a rainy day, um, my sister and I would, um, there was a big swing on the front porch. And if it was a rainy day, we would take the dogs and the cats and pillows and blankets and get in that swing and we'd swing all day long hmm. and with the animals uh, and pretend we were in airplanes and everything else oh, uh, yeah. on a rainy day. But um, And we did like you talked about, you bale the hay and put it up in the barn. Well, we made tunnels in the bales of hay <laughs> and we rode the pitchfork back and forth across the loft. And if my grandparents would have oh, known we were dangerous. doing, oh, that, they would have had. We would have never got to go back to oh, the barn yeah, if oh, they yeah, found yeah, out yeah. we were doing that. Because pitchfork, I mean, it's used to right. pull big pieces of hay up and then slim fly that way. Right. And it's it could be very dangerous. Right. And so we'd sit on top of it and swing back and forth mm -hmm. across that big that big opening. It's good and you're uh, still here. <laughs> <laughs> and if it, you know we would make the tunnels through the bales of hay, yeah. well, if they ever caved in on us, we could have suffocated. But we did it, you know. They didn't know about it, so. Um, but um, we had a good time. Uh, it was we had a different um, way to grow up. We oh, yeah. we used to talk about. Um, I know years later when we got together for class reunions and things like that, we would say that we grew up in the golden age That's right. because um, we had no worries at all. Uh, everybody was friends. There were, there were, I don't guess we ever in our community ever had a crime, did we? No, no. <laughs> uh, but um, and we just just had a good life, and it was so different from um, anybody, anybody else. That's right. That's so right. So different. Right. Right. Um, and also, I mean, uh, the, our neighbors were so wonderful. Fred Harry and Larry. Harry. Lawrence Howard, all the Howries there, right, right. they really trained me to become a farmer. Right. Otherwise, I'd have been in big trouble with the pigs <laughs> and the cows and so forth. I mean, they taught me how to milk the cow, you know, all that kind of thing. Right. It was just, it was for a young kid, it was so wonderful. To live. I remember a tale that my grandmother told, which was, was true. Um, she, uh, every year when the black heart cherries would come in, uh, my grandparents would go way up the valley <laughs> and halfway up the mountainside to this um, farm that these people owned that let them pick all they wanted of the cherries. So one time, um, my grandmother and granddaddy went up to pick the cherries and the, the lady came out to visit and my grandmother said something about Blacksburg and the lady said, oh, Miss Sutton, she said, you don't want to go to Blacksburg. And my grandmother said, well, why not? And she said, oh, it's the meanest town that there ever was. And my grandmother said, the meanest town? What do you mean the meanest town? She said, me and my husband went up there, and she said, there were uh, policemen on every single corner standing in groups. And my grandmother laughed and laughed because it was really the cadets, the cadets and the poor course. lady didn't know the difference in cadets <laughs> and policemen. But she thought Blacksburg was a terrible place yeah. to come. 
But uh, of course, when we graduated sixth grade, uh, we had to get on the bus, yeah, and so. then we had to ride on up to um, Blacksburg. Blacksburg. And I think maybe that uh, you and Judy, Tony, and myself were the only three people that they left. Graduated they from graduated from graduated from graduated from school. school and went on up to uh, yeah. Blacksburg. And I always felt like, um, I don't know about you, but I always felt like we never had a lot of trouble with um, with our subjects. Because um, if you think about it, first grade, we sat through first grade, second grade, and third grade, listened to everything. Yeah, right, we, you hear it more than once. We did that three years in a row, heard everything that was going on. Then we went to the other room, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and we listened to everything that was going on. So when we went to seventh and eighth and ninth grade, I never had any problem, no, okay. you know, sure. because we we just knew all of that stuff, yeah, you yeah. know. We More had, than we wanted to know. Yeah, we had been over it again and again and again. So, so well, we, shall we say goodbye? I mean, well, I think or maybe. Do you have some, something else to say? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think we've told everything about how the school, we grew up, and the school, school and everything. Right, and uh, so I think this is probably the end of our chat, right. and uh, we just wanted people to know what it was like to uh, be country kids and uh, all the different things. And I will say that we are not, we're not the only two-room schoolhouse. Um, there were probably Mount Tabor and Price's Fork and um, McCoy, Aronto. But they were probably all gone. Uh, uh, just about, well, some of the buildings I mean, are the still building, there. All the buildings, the buildings are still there. there. Uh, especially the Mount Tabor one, mm -hmm. I know, is still there, but I think it's a home. But um, we were not the only two-room schoolhouse. But so far in the chats, uh, we're the only people that have talked yeah. about what it was like to grow up out in the country.